that faith makes you to act like God and love makes you to be like God. When you are taking on the mindset of Christ, you are becoming like God and you are beginning to act like the way God will act. The degree to which your mind is renewed is the degree to which God can use you. What are the ways of receiving the baptism of the Spirit? Baptism by water is clear, right? You need a priest to help you do it. Baptism by into the body is simple. You need to receive the gospel and believe. When it has to do with baptism in the Spirit, there are four major ways of receiving the baptism of the Spirit. Number one is to ask God for it. Because like I told you, the Holy Ghost is already here. And it's a day that believe out of their belly shall flow. So you can be baptized in the Spirit in your bedroom. If you ask in faith, God will release him upon you. Many persons have been baptized by asking God, Lord, fill me with the Spirit. Baptize me with the Spirit. And as they kept praying in sincerity and in faith, it opened. Because they that believe out of their belly shall what? Flow rivers of living waters. Number two, how do you get baptized in the Spirit? By laying on of hands of those who carry the Spirit. Acts 19 verse 1 to 6, the disciples in Ephesus didn't know after Paul preached to them, the Bible said he laid hands on them and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. How do you get baptized in the Spirit? Number three, by staying in an atmosphere where the Holy Ghost is moving. Acts 10, 44 to 46, as Peter was yet speaking, the Holy Ghost fell upon them. That's why some of you are in a meeting and then you burst into tongues. The hand of God comes heavy upon you because you are under that ambience and your spirit is open. How do you get baptized in the Spirit? Number four, by obeying the word of God Peter was speaking he said the Holy Ghost is the gift God gives to them that obey him so if you start obeying the ordinances of God and putting it to work even asking of course you know it's an act of obedience the Holy Ghost comes upon you these are four simple ways of receiving the baptism in the spirit John 7 38 Jesus was teaching the Bible said on the last day of the feast he stood and he cried loud and said come and drink and he said, they that believe, not everybody, they that believe, he said, out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living waters. Again, this will help many people. Many people cannot be baptized in the Holy Spirit. In fact, people have tried to baptize them. When you say, come and be baptized in the Holy Spirit, they start begging God. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me. Father, if you are willing, if you are willing, it's no longer part of that prayer. The day you believed and you were baptized into the body, the Holy Ghost has been trying to rest upon you. Because we are no longer praying the Holy Ghost from heaven. Only one intercessor had the stature to pray the Holy Ghost from heaven. His name is Jesus. He said, I will pray the Father and he will send you another comforter of the same kind only jesus see you can't pray the holy ghost from heaven don't kill yourself you will die you don't have that stature only jesus has the stature to pray the holy ghost down now the holy ghost has been prayed down anybody who believes faith from it anybody who believes dives into it and begins to drink and begin to receive the easiest thing to do now is to receive the holy spirit that's the easiest thing because he's been made available he's all over the place he's in those who believe and if you are if you believe he can just flow into you and start flowing out of you the moment he flows into you he starts flowing out amazing and every christian shall carry the holy spirit in ever increasing measure baptism in the spirit the first thing you need to know about baptism in the spirit is the fact that it is not the same as salvation. Now, it is the Holy Ghost that brings you salvation. But you see, that first experience of the Holy Spirit is not the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The job that first experience comes to do is to include you in the body of Christ. Baptism in the spirit is a second layer of impartation of the Holy Spirit 
that is meant to enable you for service you can be born into the body of christ but you are not yet empowered for service that's why okay i'll read some scriptures if you look at the disciples of jesus in luke chapter 24 from verse 44 to verse 49 you are going to see the first time they received the holy spirit jesus was speaking to them and he said behold i send you the promise of the father he said tarry in jerusalem that you may be endued with power now before he began all of these things from verse 42 to 43 when he showed up the bible said he breathed on them and said receive ye the holy spirit and as he did that he said he opened their understanding that they may understand the scripture so he had breathed the holy spirit upon them before but he now told them in verse 49 tarry until you are endued with power the first holy spirit they received was to baptize them into the body was to bring them to become part of the body and was to bring eternal life into them but the holy ghost the second holy ghost he told them about that one is not to become part of the body that one is for the work of the ministry that's why in acts chapter 2 from verse 1 the moment the holy ghost descended they went out he said when the day of pentecost was fully come he said they were together in one accord and suddenly they heard a sound as of a rushing mighty wind and the place where they were was filled with the holy spirit cloven tongues as of fire appeared on their head immediately boldness came immediately they left the upper room immediately they hit the city and they started preaching the gospel the people that were weak and afraid before suddenly became bold energized to do the work of god so when you find a christian who cannot do the work of god the first place to check is whether he or she is baptized in the holy spirit because the moment you receive the baptism of the holy ghost genuinely the ability of god will come upon your life the passion to do the work of god will come upon your life and if you are not doing the work of god then check the veracity of what you call baptism in the spirit because everybody who was baptized in the spirit instantly became energized to do the work of god now there are situations where both can happen simultaneously as you are receiving jesus immediately you are baptized but it doesn't mean it is the same you see that in the case of cornelius in acts chapter 10 verse 44 to 46 the bible said why peter was yet speaking the moment their heart opened and they believed the holy ghost fell upon them and they started speaking in tongues so baptism in the spirit number one is the supernatural impartation of the holy ghost upon a man to enable him for the work of the ministry it is what a supernatural impartation of the holy ghost upon a man to enable him do the work of the ministry number two thing you need to know is that it is different from the new birth experience the new birth experience although it is the holy ghost that brings eternal life it is baptism into the body it is the second experience of the holy spirit that we call baptism in the spirit you may know it now and it may appear simple to you but there are many persons who keep arguing that they don't need the holy ghost to fill them again that the day they receive christ that was enough if you receive christ and that baptism happened with the signs that you follow we won't argue because it's possible for it to happen simultaneously but if those signs have not followed and you are not enabled to do the work of god brother don't deceive yourself if you want to read the zenith of your potential in christ then you must be baptized in the holy spirit what are the evidences that must play out in the life of a man who is baptized in the spirit there are three major evidences three major evidences number one anybody who is baptized in the holy spirit will speak in tongues and i'm using my word carefully i didn't say must speak in tongues i say will speak in tongues because it's a function of your will god won't force you but if you understand the benefits you will know you should speak in tongues in acts chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8 you see the apostles they didn't stop with tongues 
In Acts chapter 2 verse 4 to 10, they spoke in tongues. But they moved forward. In chapter 3, the Bible said Peter and John came to the temple at the hour of prayer. They saw an impotent man that begged them for help. And Peter looked at him and said, look on us. And he said the man was looking because what they would do on a normal day was to give money. So that's what the man was expecting. They had not grown into power yet, but they grew. And they said the man was expecting to receive something. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none. If you think it's what we have been giving you, I came here with today. Something has changed. Now power has come. He said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And he said, the man could not rise up. The guy knew he had power. He held him, pulled him up. And the man was limping and walking. And they kept pushing. And he began to glorify God. The Bible says strength came to his ankles. So don't stop with tongues. That's what I tell people every day. It's only Pharisees that stop with prayer. You now speak in tongues. You feel important. Oh God, the person with headache, the headache is still there. The cancer is still there. Thank God for your tongues. But I need this pain to go. So don't pride yourself in tongues alone. You are, you are not a Pharisee that brags with prayer. But unfortunately, our generation stops at prayer and we brag with prayer. When somebody finishes praying and his suit is wet, he will walk like a man of stature. He will walk like a man of stature and sit down and he will be acting as a spiritual man. He will look up. When you see Ghana people, sometimes you just marvel what demons tell them. Somebody is done praying, he will sit down and do like this. So that you will feel that, Kai, something is happening. Hey, something, something. Meanwhile, if he was alone, he wouldn't do that. Though. It's because he's church and he knows people are looking. An angel is whispering to him. Since there is so much power on your body that you want to explode, somebody has cancer here. Please transmit that power there. Don't deceive yourself, sir. Grow. See, when that's why I teach people these things. Some of us learned it the hard way. We were doing these things. I did it. That's why I know it. Until people started dying in my family. When somebody's in the hospital, my brother was in coma. Intercessors will come. Come on, sir. The guy died. So when I see young people who have not experienced life doing those things, I warn them because when the day of trouble comes, that caricature, you will hate yourself. The apostles didn't stop with acts of prayer. They scored acts of the apostles. They demonstrated power from place to place. So their tongue matured into power. So when you are done, Kampa, Reko, Pakasuzwa, Maragata, Sexigo, begin to experiment. Start with headache. When you migrate from headache, start with broken bones. Go to growth. Speak over people's circumstance. Start with issues of barrenness. By this time next year, you will carry a boy. Go and wait. When one year come, ask if the person doesn't come, what happened? Those are the things that should trouble you. Because you must move from tongues to power. When you pray for somebody, I have pain on the back. When you finish praying, he's going. Say, wait, come. Is the pain still there? If the pain is still there, pray again. Because the reason you charged yourself is not to feel good, it's to create power, it's to generate power. If the pain is there, pray again. Did you not read about Jesus? He prayed for a blind man, and the guy said, I see men as three. He said, Come back. I didn't do this for you to see men as three. You must see men as men. And he laid hands again, and the eyes became clear. If you stop at this pride of prayer, and you are walking like an ancient man. Please don't denature yourself. What we are looking for is power. Power, not posture. The world is too dark. We are looking for power. You have been baptized in the Holy Ghost for five years. What can you handle? That's the question you should start asking yourself. What can you handle? Somebody is sick. Can you do anything about it? Somebody is broke. Can you do anything about it? Somebody is in danger. Can you do anything about it? If you can't do anything, go back to your altar and tell yourself, I won't leave here until something rests. Because the reason they started with prayer is because
praying in tongues is the energizer of the power i've taught you about power before right dunamis kratos so you know that so it is the prayer that generates power so go back and pray but pray with a different consciousness i must come out with something and when you fire even your generation will know that god have sent a man and then after power you have the third evidence of, of of baptism in the holy ghost which is the character of the spirit the fruits of the spirit the fruit of the spirit is not the fruit of the holy ghost it's the fruit of the recreated human spirit the moment your spirit was recreated love was installed patience was installed kindness was installed the problem is that you may not be able to manifest it so when the holy ghost comes what the holy ghost helps you to do is to begin to stare those fruits until they start finding expression so power and the fruits of the spirit may not be instant but if a man is genuinely baptized in the spirit over time we shall see it that's the third sign 